Right or wrong. Okay. Um, this is just a brief agenda page. We kind of skip through it, but those are kind of the categories I'm going to be talking about. A little bit of stuff on insurance, a little bit of stuff on technology, some wheelchair accessories, uh, and a little bit of the basic stuff with your activities of daily living. Um, so we'll go through. This stuff is very, very intro oriented. So we'll fly through it here. Obviously, you guys probably have a pretty good idea what adaptive equipment is, but it's basically just broadly any tool or device that's going to be able to make a, a, an associated daily activity task a little bit easier. Um, these can be very complicated. These can be very simple. These can be expensive and expensive. So um, don't get too carried away with what that uh, actual word adaptive equipment means. Uh, but one in four adults are living with some form of disability. So it's, it's a big, broad category, and there's a lot more adaptive equipment being developed all the time. Um, so it's always good to kind of be in touch with what's happening out there. There's a bunch of uh, resources I'll show you at the end for kind of how to stay uh, aware with some of that stuff. Um, insurance, I'm not going to bore you too much with this stuff. Everyone's got different insurance um, companies that they're working with, federally funded versus HMO, PPO, those kinds of things. Uh, I can't get you too much into specifics of it, but generally speaking, with a lot of adaptive equipment, not durable medical, medical equipment, it's not stuff that gets typically covered by insurance, as you've probably seen. Um, there are exceptions, um, but just keep that in mind that, um, you know, the kinds of things like dressing aids and self-feeding aids and things like that aren't typically covered. It's usually the things that they deem medically necessary. You guys have probably heard that phrase a few times before too. Um, but in any case, it's important just to uh, consult with your healthcare provider about these things and be evaluated for your physical ability, specifically by a PT or an OT or a speech language pathologist if that's an issue. Um, to decide what equipment is the best for you. Um, but again, most of these things are things that you can kind of purchase privately. So there's always the option to, to purchase things privately and try it on your own. Um, what will the insurance cover? Again, durable medical equipment kind of specifically is the thing. The typical things that you've seen, walkers, canes, chairs, hospital beds, commodes, that doesn't mean everyone gets those things covered. Uh, the Hoyer lifts often do alternating pressure pads for your for your bed, uh, pressure distribution wheelchair cushions, you guys have probably heard of the row hose or the gel cushions. Um, those kinds of things get covered. The things that don't get covered are the things that some of which we might be talking about now. A lot of the shower chairs don't, bathtub transfer benches, dressing equipment, feeding equipment, things like that. Um, but not all hope is lost. Some of those things do get covered, um, especially if you can get a letter of medical necessity involved or doctor's prescription, but you guys have probably seen that even with doctor's prescription, sometimes that stuff um, does not get covered. Uh, I will try to slow down. I know I speak very quickly, especially when I'm nervous. So <laughs> someone tell me if I'm running too fast. Um, if an insurance company denies coverage for anything that you deem to be really, really important or a doctor has ordered, there's always op options to go through an appeal process. You can do that with the assistance of a doctor, sometimes a therapist, sometimes even a social worker can help you with that appeal process. Um, especially if you can show that distinction that it is medically necessary for you to be able to do X, Y, or Z. And without it, you will, you know, failure or thrive, something like that. Um, again, even with all that documentation doesn't mean it will get covered, um, but hopefully we'll give you a couple of options for every category here that will be some inexpensive and some pretty expensive. Um, so let's see if we can go through here. I'll try to put some fun pictures in here, guys, so I hope that's <laughs> not so boring. Uh, all right, so self-feeding. Again, the levels for you guys, uh, just based on what I heard, and it sounded like everyone from uh, like a T12 L1 up through C67, was that the highest I think I heard? Um, so some of these things are gonna be completely inapplicable for some folks and some of them might be really appropriate for some. Um, keep in mind that you're looking at considerations for everything, right? It's not just about getting the piece of equipment, it's kind of seeing what your range of motion is, what your strength is, what your prehension is, the kinds of foods you're eating, all that stuff. Um, so keep in mind that uh, these are just kind of broad strokes and some of this stuff. If you're someone who has decreased strength or range of motion, there are all kinds of things as far as extended utensils you can see here that bend out, um, straighten out, you have bendable utensils if you have less forearm, supination, pronation, less wrist extension, flexion, things like that. Um, bunch of stuff out there. Again, you guys have probably all had therapy before, so some of these are gonna be pretty uh, familiar to you. You're gonna see the U-cuff you may have heard, especially for my, my C5, C6-ish folks, C7 folks. Um, the U-cuff you've seen before, you can put the utensils directly into that. I'll show you a little bit about that. Uh, the larger grip handles, the foam tubing, which you can get for very cheap and apply to your toothbrush, apply to your fork and knife, the vertical palm handles you've seen here, 
And then there's some fancier stuff like this liftware at the bottom here that you might see. I don't know if you guys are in the way here, but uh, is the chat box here in the way for you guys or not really? No, the chat okay. box. Okay, no. it's, it's I just have a on, question. Are you, yeah, I please. don't know if you're going to speak more about the liftware, but that looks really interesting. If you're oh, yeah, I got a video of it actually coming right up. Hey, so okay, perfect. Beautiful. Perfect. All perfect. Right. Okay. Um, so, some of these things again, you may have seen before this dorsal wrist drop splint at the top here. If you can see my icon, this one with the young man holding the fork and the spoon, uh, they have those additional right angle cuffs or the extended cuffs. Just depends a lot on your range of motion, your mobility. Um, and exactly how you might be able to use some of these devices. It kind of, again, needs a little bit of assessment, but the, the wrist drop splint that you do see at the top, that is something that uh, very often does get covered by insurance um, with the right prescription. Um, so that kind of thing, I'll just try to shout those out there when I see them. Um, the Futuro splint, I uh, didn't put a picture of here, but that's something that you would, again, just like a wrist brace that you would get even in a pharmacy, a CVS. And then they have them that have with the, you can add the U-cuff on separately, which is again, like a five or $10 piece of equipment. So you can have that wrist support without getting the dorsal wrist arthrosis. You can add that U-cuff on, put the fork or knife or spoon directly in that. And then if you have limited grasp or prehension, you've got something that's kind of not going to go anywhere and you can just do the gross motor movement of bringing hand to mouth. Um, let's see. Oh, here's our lift wear. Look at this. Perfect. All right. All right this thing's pretty funky. So, um, oh. Network. Uh, this thing is pretty funky. It's a it's a little bit more on the expensive side, but I'll show you that guy again. But it is um, it will adapt to your range of motion and movement, and it's somehow magically through strange science or wizardry is keeping that utensil always sort of facing up, especially for the spoon. Um, so if you can imagine as you're bringing that to your mouth, it will. Uh, minimize bills. I think it's about a couple, couple hundred bucks for the set. Um, not something that I've seen that gets typically covered by insurance, but uh, I have heard from colleagues that depending on the diagnosis, depending on the level of medical necessity, they have had some intermittent success with it. I personally haven't seen it covered by anyone, um, but you know, there's always the chance. So uh, if it's something you're interested in, I put hyperlinks in almost everywhere in this PowerPoint. I'm going to send it to you guys. So you can kind of peruse this again. I have like a hundred slides in here. So I'm going to try to move quickly, but I want to give it to you all so you can just have it and look through it and click on things as they seem interesting. Um, so the link for it is in there uh, with pricing and all of that. I want to see the video again, just because it takes two seconds and it's funny. Pretty funky, right? So you can imagine if you have less wrist flexion, rest, less wrist extension, less forearm supination, pronation, those kinds of things, this thing should sort of adapt to your movement as you bring it from your hand to your mouth. Uh, the dining with dignity, some of you folks may have heard of and seen that before. A uh, little lower tech, but um, I think it's about 80 bucks for the set. Link is in there if you want to investigate it. They have the fork, knife, and spoon set that I think is the one that's about 65 or 70 bucks, 80 bucks, something in that range. Um, and people like to bring those oftentimes, especially out to restaurants because they look more or less like normal utensils and they just have the rings to kind of keep your hand in place, especially for your, again, your higher cervical folks. Um, let's see what else we got here. These are just a couple of the things that we have in the clinic. Again, we see the dining with dignity stuff, the built up grips, the foam grips, the vertical palm grip, all kinds of stuff that we have here. We have the liftware, we have the dining with dignity sets. Uh, we have a couple other things for tremors too, if that's an issue. Um, but that's just about some of the stuff that we, I kind of laid out the one, some of the ones we had. So you had all the scope of them. Um, and then beyond actual utensils, I guess, again, I don't know how much everyone knew. So I was going to just throw it all out. You Dyson is probably something you've all heard. Scoop dishes, those plate guards that are over here, they can attach to your plates at home. This is if you're having any difficulty scooping things specifically up. If you have, especially one upper extremity is a little less effective than the other. Um, these high-low uh, scoop plates, um, the scoop dishes, and there's ones that obviously have like a suction cup or a rubber matting underneath. A couple other options here, same thing. Dyson non-skid material underneath the suction bowl, bowls and plates make it a little bit easier for you, um, especially if you're having a difficult time at all stabilizing uh, the surface you're eating from in addition to managing the utensil. Drinking strategies, also kind of part and parcel with the wheelchair accessories thing. Um, again, I didn't hear anyone 
much higher than that C5 area, but if we did have someone on that was a little bit higher level than that, you might be looking at those folks for the bendable straws that come all the way directly from where you have it set up in the wheelchair up to your mouth. So you don't, if you have limited, say cervical range of motion, limited shoulder range of motion, um, long straws, that flexi mug is this one that you see here with this young man in the white t-shirt drinking from. Uh, not particularly expensive, but can make life a little bit easier. And then beyond that, Camelback has a whole bunch of products, not necessarily geared towards wheelchair, but our, you know the world has sort of figured out how to use them very well. This one's a great one for the wheelchair. And uh, there's a product to have that linked in right there. But again, if you think about the Camelbacks on the back of a power wheelchair or a standard wheelchair, then there you have that, that straw that's extending all the way to you and you just kind of have to pick it up through your mouth. Less to do with the range of motion and the strength to be able to grip the cup and bring it to your mouth, yada, yada, yada. But Camelback, uh, people have figured out how to use that really effectively um, for the spinal cord community. Um, other drinking strategies here, obviously two-handed grips you guys have probably seen, adaptive grips that you've had, the, the, the two-handed mug is that one all the way to the right near the strawberries. So there's a bunch of strategies out there in addition to actual equipment, but um, suffice it to say, there's like a hundred, there's a thousand things out there. It's just about finding what's right for you. Uh, cutting, you guys have probably met OTs in the past. You've all probably heard us talk about rocker knives. We love rocker knives, we're always talking about them. Here's a bunch of options. Um, we have the, the Mezzaluna uh, style cutting, the T-grip, um, standard rocker. This is just a built up grip. There's the dining with dignity knife again, and this crazy looking one is um, uh, like a basically a, a large serrated. It's actually um, looks kind of more like a saw than it does a knife, but with the right cutting board uh, and depending on your strength and grip and prehension, could be a good option for you, even though it looks sort of deadly. Um, let's see what else here. We're gonna talk a little bit about mobile arm supports a couple other times. Again, this is again for my upper folks, your upper extremity folks, if you're having, some weakness in your upper extremities and you need the actual mobile arm support in order to do the range of motion. Maybe you have a little bit better distal mobility and grip and pin strength in your hand, but it's about the shoulder and the elbow range of motion or the strength sustained, taking yourself through a full meal. Mobile arm supports do exist. I have a little bit of a, a link to it and some more information later on, but suffice it to say, if you have weakness there for any of these tasks, oral care, self-care, self-feeding, those are options. Um, they can be sometimes expensive, but I also have seen that people have gotten them uh, covered by insurance time or two, um, depending on the letter of medical necessity, how well that's written, the doctor's prescription, and again, the diagnosis. Um, keep that in mind, that it's something that you can use basically for anything uh, hair, nail, I'm sorry, not nail, hair, self hygiene, face washing, um, self feeding, that kind of stuff. Uh, great. Question so far with self-feeding. I know I tried to move quickly, but again, I over-prepared. I got like a hundred slides here. <laughs> Good with self-feeding for the moment. Okay. Hygiene grooming with that lady trying to cut her own hair. Here are some of the topics. Again, considerations, I will fly through them. These are just, you can kind of bruise on your own mobile arm support, the distal wrist support if you need that, any wrist braces, U cuffs in order to put toothbrushes in. Um, things for nail care, a couple options. Let's get into some of the specifics. For oral care, you've probably seen the recommendation for an electric toothbrush. Those easy grips are the yellow guys that I have in there. Um, they're gonna be good for a couple other options. You can get a whole kit for very cheap, a bunch of different ones. You can apply them to different things in your, your household. They can fit over cups, they can fit over containers, fit over your toothbrush or your paintbrush if you're an artist. Um, the larger grips, like the one on the end here, the green handle. Also, you can think about that foam tubing that we talked about in the beginning can be applied to a toothbrush. Again, this is more for our folks that are having difficulty with their grip or prehension. Let's see if we can kind of fly through some of these. Here are a couple other options. Again, you can peruse through two-handed techniques, the finger weaving you see with this young man here. Um, this is this young lady's using the U-cuff. There is um, a couple other things that looks like OTs have kind of custom done. We've done something similar to this just to, you know, we've had people bring in their toothbrushes and we functionally figure out a way either with orthoplastic material or a C-clip or uh, uh, a custom made piece of orthoplastic just built on, even Velcroed on to make it work for you. Again, it depends on your, your grip, your pinch, coordination. Adaptive pumps for toothbrushes, for toothpaste, makes it, things a little bit easier. Um, same thing with hand washing, they have uh, motion activated faucets, 
lever style faucets make things a little bit easier, but the pump style soap dispensers make things sometimes easier for hand washing. Um, same. I'm sorry, go ahead. Someone's asking a question. No, I thought I heard a voice. Okay. Um, face washing, they also have uh, wash mitts you might have seen. Um, they have these hand and towels that are very easy to uh, get at drugstores and pharmacies, um, the ones where you can just add in the soap bar right, up, right in through. Um, pump style face wash is also a good idea again for our cervical folks. Airbrushing hair care. Range of motion or strength is limited with your shoulders, especially with that external rotation. Try to get up to the back of the hair. Um, you got some options here with long handled extended hair brushes and combs, built up brushes for your grip. The hair dryer stand, I've seen folks have uh, a lot of satisfaction with those kinds of things are pretty easy to find too on Amazon. But if you don't have the strength to hold the hair dryer as well as being able to manage the comb or the brush on the other side, it's a nice option. Um, Let's see, I got a couple of these also tossed in here. This is like a U-cuff similar situation. This is adapted for your fingers, the U-cuff here, the extended brush, kind of like a dining with dignity grip that someone made. Um, so there's you know tons of options out there in addition to the long handled ones. Makeup, not something I'm super, I don't do a whole ton in my life, but uh, I have seen uh, some of the other therapists work with and try to come up with ways to um, make this adaptable. This one at the bottom here is the wand chick. It's actually for handwriting, but I've seen people use this directly with eyeliner or brushes and apply that kind of custom make it. Some of these other things are pretty low tech, just coban wrapped around larger tubing. Again, range of motion is limited. Um, blue cuff here, finger weaving option is also a good idea. And then I got a couple other pictures of some things here. This, this one that's mentioned down here, this figure eight makeup holder. That's this guy. This young lady is using kind of an adaptive, looks like someone custom made wrap around. I think this is my colleague Alyssa did. Um, and then again, this is a two handed technique, more of a compensatory strategy as opposed to an adaptive piece of equipment. Shaving, I don't know how, uh, let's see. We have a couple of options as far as uh, electric razors more or less than the manual razors. Um, this, you know, again, not a specific recommendation, but these are things, you know, you're based on your, your sensation and your skin sensitivity and your range of motion, those kinds of things, obviously, you know, use, use, use caution. And, um, I would say that a lot of these electric razors end up being sometimes safest options, especially for lower extremities. Um, and then this is just an adapted piece, like an adapted piece of thermoplastic material that we've added on with Velcro to add for a grip. Um, same thing here. These are just some Velcro straps and a D-ring. And then this is obviously a U-cuff with a regular standard razor in it. Uh, nail care. There are a bunch of options there. Some things custom that we can make with thermoplastic material like this T-bar or the figure eight option. There's also people have fastened them to like a wooden block with an emery board. Uh, there are ones that you can buy, large ones that look like kind of one of those big staplers that you can hit the paddle of. You could just put your hand in there and your other hand can kind of... Um, slam down on top, but that always looks a little scary to me. Um, you can usually get by with a little bit more of a low tech thing as opposed to buying that for 30 bucks. Or get a manicure, it's also the <laughs> possible option for those of you that get manicures. Uh, here's some more stuff that's self here. Again, that's an extended brush. These are just a couple of things we have in clinic. This is a self-inspecting mirror with the adaptive grip. You can use that for wound care management. You can use that for self-cathing if you need to do that. You can use that for anything else as far as your hygiene, grooming, hair care, something like that. But that does make some things a little bit easier. Um, again, not an, an expensive piece of equipment, maybe 15 bucks. Okay with hygiene grooming? I know I'm moving fast, guys. Dressing. This cute guy's putting his shirt on. Okay, reachers, you guys have all probably seen this stuff. There are a million reachers out there, suction cup ones, ones with a vertical grip, ones with a more of a horizontal grip, ones with a magnet at the end, ones with a hook at the end. If you put in reachers in Amazon or any other search engine uh, for shopping, you're going to find a million. Um, so, you know, that's just about finding the right options for you. There's 19, 20 inch ones, there's 36 inch ones. So if you are doing things, all performing things from a seated wheelchair position and you need to retrieve things from cabinets, it's not to be overlooked. It seems like a simple device, but it can be really helpful, especially the suction cup ones for retrieving glasses from cabinets. If you haven't like completely modified your kitchen in order to make things very accessible, that's an option. 
um, and they're inexpensive. So um, aside from the other recommendations for using plastic versus glass, you're making it very accessible at the countertop height or at lower countertops, those kinds of things. If you do need to use a breacher, they, they're out there um, and uh, they're, they're pretty pretty cheap option. Um, some other dressing ideas, probably seeing lock laces. There's also elastic laces. This is a sock gauge. You probably have all seen something like it. Um, there are a bunch of different types of sock aids out there. There's the hard plastic one that I have pictured here with the foam handles. There's the softer plastic one, makes it a little bit easier. There's something for stockings. Um, we have a bunch of options here and there are a bunch to just find very easily uh, online and Amazon. Again, most of this stuff is not super expensive. Here are those lace locks, a different type of lace lock, elastic laces that you could just keep tied, long handle shoehorns. Again, I'm moving through because I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of this stuff. Dressing sticks, there's a couple of different options in this foot funnel shoe assist, but the dressing stick ends up being pretty useful for folks, especially if you have a limited range of motion, pull a jacket back over your shoulders or pulling up pants or undergarments, things like that, and then being able to pull up and shift lean side to side, those kinds of options. Um, the foot funnel shoe assist is something we have in clinic too, and you could find online for pretty cheap. Um, some people like that even better than the shoehorn. You basically put that in the shoe, there's ropes attached, you put your shoe, foot in the shoe, and then you can pull that up very similar to what a sock aid would do. Um, but it kind of keeps that form of the shoe the whole time where you're trying to um, orient your foot into the shoe. So believe it or not, people have uh, like that a little bit better than the shoehorn. So if you've ever tried a long handled shoehorn and it annoys you and the back of the shoe heel keeps going in, this might be a good option. Um, again, not super expensive. It's about 14, 15 bucks right now. Um, other dressing options again for my uh, upper cervical folks zipper poles a link to that this four set is very cheap to get you can apply them to your your standard zipper it makes it a little bit easier to kind of hook and pull uh, the button hooks you guys have all kind of seen before i'm sure but that just makes uh buttons on a shirt a little easier to apply Okay, here's some of the fun stuff with dressing there's a bunch of companies doing all kinds of stuff these days nike got he has these fly ease Velcro enclosures, zipper enclosures, very discreet style, easy to slide in. Um, that's the link specifically for those shoes. They're still stylish. They're very cool looking. Obviously, Nike is a big brand. A lot of people are doing adaptive footwear. So if you look through Nike, specifically at the Fly Ease, you'll find them. Um, and they're pretty comfy from my understanding. Zappos has a whole adaptive page with all their brands listed on there popular brands doing a bunch of stuff. So it seems like a lot of companies are just getting smarter and smarter with this stuff and making sure they're making products for um, folks who need them. So uh, not a bad thing to look for. Um, and again, price at basically the price that you see most things on the Zappo is not too different than um, getting any other standard footwear. But speaking of adaptive footwear, Uggs are a good option. Obviously people love them and they're comfortable. They're a little expensive, but often just inherently based on their design, they are either slip on or a simple enclosure, like one zipper that you can add a zipper pull to if you needed to. Um, and you've obviously seen a, a number of those slip on Uggs that are shorter than the ones that I have pictured here. But even these that have the laces on them, it already has the, the pull tab, makes it a little bit easier. So again, that just is a kind of a, a, a friendly brand uh, for folks with some limited mobility, possibly, or some limited hand movement. Um, more custom, not custom ones, more uh, specific to folks with uh, living with a disability, the belly footwear, these flip flop style, very easy to kind of slip on. They're a little, uh, maybe not quite as stylish as some of the other ones, but they don't look as bad as they look in that picture when you have them on. They basically slip right over whatever your brace or shoe is. If you have a brace, this is why that makes it kind of effective. And then you zipper it all around. They make them a bunch of different styles, chambray, leather suede. Um, that is, Probably something I would recommend more if it was someone who needed to wear some sort of brace and they weren't have they were having difficulty getting uh, any kind of standard or adaptive shoe over on top of that brace. Um, that kind of makes it easy. It still looks like you're wearing shoes, but they're very easy to pop on. Adaptive clothing. Um, a couple options here for uh, I, I've seen pretty often that sometimes the bra becomes a little bit difficult, especially for again cervical folks. Um, Bra Easy is an option, the Bra Angel you've probably seen that works with standard bras, allow people to just use uh, sports bra to kind of adapt. And then this brand, Silverts, has a bunch of gear, tops, bottoms, shoe wear accessories specifically, but they have a bunch of things um, in as far as dressing is concerned that are specifically adaptive. Um, other brands that we have on here that I've gotten a lot of good recommendations for. 
accessible fashion is, is a link with all kinds of fashion dedicated towards uh, being more accessible for folks. Um, this Fora is really an awesome website you guys can look through. This is all lifestyle and accessory brands that are looking at that functional design, looking at being still very uh, attractive clothing and accessories. Um, all of that is at the forefront, but it's all geared specifically towards folks living with a disability. So the idea is you're not just getting some, you know, you're not living with a disability and just getting this, um, you know, this, these uh, adaptive clothing that looks more like it's functional as opposed to being uh, attractive. Um, so that, that those brands are, are cool brands that we've heard a lot of good things from and we recommend. And, you know, it's like buying other designer clothing. So sometimes it can be expensive, but there's, you know, the big wide variety and they're geared towards someone who needs to be able to get them on, say, while still seated in the wheelchair, or is it going to be able to stand up, say, to pull up over hips? So you can look on both of those sites. You can find a bunch of cool stuff that's all dedicated towards folks with disability, very often folks who are in a wheelchair. So, um, that is, those are cool brands to kind of glance through if you're looking for a shopping spree. Tommy Hilfiger, you've probably seen a bunch of times is doing really awesome stuff. Um, adjustable waists, magnetic enclosures, big wide openings, things that easy open necklines, uh, very trendy pieces still, prices obviously range, um, but there are a lot of really good options there. And again, they still look like Tommy Hilfiger clothes. So um, that's a brand that we, we have liked a lot and seen a lot. So just, uh, that's something you can shop for. Other adaptive clothing, again, I'm just gonna throw them all at you and you guys can kind of look through them. Magna Ready does a bunch of all magnet enclosure clothing. Um, again, very easy to get on, especially if you're uh, performing from a seated position or still supine in the bed. A um, Bunch of other brands you can glance at. These pick line covers, if someone has that, they make a bunch of ones stylish, yada, yada, yada. Cool way sports, like this jacket you see here, the young lady in the pink jacket. Those are also designed to be sort of outerwear, but you are seated in a wheelchair. So power wheelchair or standard wheelchair, bunch of clothing jackets out there that you can kind of put on while seated. A lot of times they, you can kind of put them on without having to lean forward and bring over your back, those kinds of options. So again, depending on your mobility, depending on your core strength, your sitting mobility, um, some good options there. Other resources I just wanted to give you again, just for your guys to peruse, this Trendable is um, is a blog created uh, with tips and tricks for clothing items, shoes, look a combination of things over the years. So it's a cool thing to kind of look through. Again, some of the stuff you guys have probably seen before or you've perused on your own, um, but I want to give you as much as I can come up with. Okay, shower and bathing, there's Ferris Bueller. Bathing options, you've probably seen the handheld shower head, a uh, couple options. You can get them at Home Depot um, or Lowe's or wherever you guys shop. Um, bathing options for limited mobility. Bath mitts for grip grasp, if that's an issue. Um, or the multiple sponges or the long handled sponges as you see pictured here. Again, if you don't have the shoulder range of motion, you guys have seen stuff as far as grab bars are concerned. There are white wall grab bars. There are chrome grab bars. They're not horribly expensive. They do need to be put into the wall and to studs, as you probably have seen. So those are things that should be professionally installed if you have a handy person around that can do it. Um, or if you yourself are handy, just making sure they are per perfectly into a stud. Let's see here. Shower chairs, you guys probably all have something uh, similar at home. Uh, shower chairs, the tub transfer benches that you extend over the edge of the tub that you sit on and scoop in. These RAS chairs have been getting covered, believe it or not, sometimes with the letter of medical necessity, and they are very, very fancy, uh, but they are on wheels. So depending on your mobility, if you need to get into a chair, especially if you're coming from a hoarder lift or you're, you're, you're pretty significant assistance for transfer, this can be rolled in. This is obviously, if you have a, ha a, a handicap accessible shower where you there is no threshold, you're rolling directly in. Um, but those, uh, they're making a whole bunch of pretty cool shower chairs that uh, can be can be covered, believe it or not, because um, they can sometimes qualify as a commode. Uh, so it depends on how they kind of write their letter of medical necessity and how the doctor prescribes it. But they're you know not saying that it will absolutely get covered, just, just an option. Um, and then again, the tub transfer bench is maybe about 115 bucks, shower chair is 50, 65 bucks, something like that. Again, I would still have you be assessed by your PT and OT to determine the most appropriate device if you are in need of something new. A couple other options, most salmon's Preston, uh, but a couple of other options for you can kind of look through. Okay, toileting. Um, 
standard stuff that you might have seen, the drop arm commode is all the way to the side. This three in one commode is the one that's almost often, almost always covered by insurance. The elevated toilet frame for your transfer, just to be able to push up from. Again, it depends on your bathroom, depends on your setup, depends on your mobility. Um, aside from that, you know, with a neurogenic bladder, if you are using, if you're able to use a urinal, they have female urinals, they have this uh, freshette, which is a pretty nice option. Toilet aids for your personal hygiene portions without getting into the nitty gritty here. But the bidets all over the world seem to be kind of exploding. So they, they believe it or not, there is a best bidets 2022 article on Forbes.com. So you can look through that. And honestly, if I had someone who has very, very limited mobility or they had the, the um, uh, limited caregiver support, things like that is an easy option. A lot of them can be attached directly onto your current toilet. Sometimes you don't even need a plumber. You don't even need an electrician. Uh, Hello Tushy is a, is a popular brand, but if you click on that link, you're going to see the most popular, like 10 or 12 different categories. This one that's here is a portable one, so you'd leave it nearby. Um, but a lot of them are the much easier to kind of attach to your current toilet seat, or they replace your toilet seat, but the actual toilet fixture can stay. Again, it's a really, really nice option um, if you're lacking in the mobility to do uh, the personal hygiene, the self-care hygiene following toileting. And then some clothing management, just a suggestion set. Um, I was kind of tossing in there as far as adaptive clothing for it or how you would do the transfer, performing the bladder program if you have one. Uh, it's supine in bed versus seated in the chair. Those are just less about equipment, more about that. And then I gave you a bunch of videos that I had. Obviously, you don't need the male catheterization one, but... Some videos in case you're having any difficulties with any of those things, clothing management videos, um, using that self-emptying leg bag from Melio, female catheterization, other adaptive equipment I was thinking of. Um, again, you avoid the male options, the female options they have out there, aside from the leg spreader, there's also a bunch of Kathy mirrors you can put either place on the floor or they have the bendable arms um, or that one that you saw back in self-care um, that we use with uh, managing your hair. Um, also good equipment that exists out there. Again, not particularly expensive. Here's some other stuff we're gonna to try to fly through. Dorsal wrist orthosis, you saw this active hand here. If you have limited grip strength, here's another dorsal based wrist orthosis. Um, we have a bunch of options here, those easy holds. I put a link in there for you. Bunch of different sizes here. They go on the toothbrush, here they go on a uh, toilet brush if it's very important to you to be cleaning your toilet right now. Uh, jars, bottles, cans, other mobility assists. You guys have probably seen this stuff. We're already doing it. Rigid leg lifters, thigh lifters, especially for folks with limited hand movements. Um, smart rails, those kinds of things exist. Mobile arm support, we were talking about a little bit. Here's a link to Jayco, which is like the number one in mobile arm supports. Some of these attached, here's onto your wheelchair stuff. Some of these attached directly onto manual wheelchairs or power wheelchairs. I can't make a specific recommendation for that unless I knew what your chair was. Um, often it's easiest to go directly through your wheelchair vendor for those options because they usually have options um, that directly attach on and have the right fixtures for them to fit. Again, not guaranteed that it would be uh, supported, but again, this is for our folks with limited proximal upper body strength uh, need that for a little bit better range of motion. So you can add them onto a table, you can add them onto a wheelchair, power or standard gives you some options, a little bit more independence with the things if you have that distal mobility, but just not the proximal strength. And running, again, I only have a couple of folks that I think this might be applicable for, but built up grips. The pen again is this one that looks like a U. That one chick writer is here again. Um, weighted pens, if you have tremor issues. A couple of options for reading page turners. I'm gonna skip through some of this stuff. Okay, technology is a piece that Again, I don't know how much the folks on this call need, but I will kind of fly through it a little bit. Computer use, there are typers, typing sticks, stylus, touch screens, make options. These oval eights are like 90 cents if you have difficulties maintaining digit extension for able to do even just kind of a hunt and peck typing on a standard keyboard. I put a link in here for a bunch of computer use ideas. Um, if you're having issues with your mouse, issues with the keyboard, issues with navigating both, um, there's a bunch of different options in there for you. And then as far as accessing smart technology, we all probably have something like a, or maybe are familiar at least with uh, Amazon Echo or Google Home, those kinds of options. 
this is going to be getting into too complicated of a conversation, so I'm going to kind of move through it quickly and just suffice it to say that there are assistive technology experts out there, including OTs, uh, probably an OT that you've already worked with, but some of us here for sure are pretty comfortable with it. If you need access to certain things in your home, um, getting that home center, setting it up with a hub system like these, and then connecting your lights, connecting your TV, connecting your, um, your door, if you have an electric door opener, um, there's a bunch of things out there. It does take a kind of a tech savvy person to do it. So if you are tech savvy, you can certainly investigate this stuff on your own. Otherwise, you can look for an assistive technology um, expert in your area. If you already have an OT, they will probably know if they're not already. And if not, you can always reach out to me and I can try to help find you someone. Outlets are very easy, easy to purchase, easy to find. If you're having the limited mobility, get around the house, turn off every light switch, turn on every um, every plug in the house. These, these are easy to purchase. Um, and easy to set up with your your Amazon or your your, your Alexa or your um, Google Home or whatever hub you're using. Television. So this stuff's pretty, um, I think, common sense. If you are having difficulty with the remote control itself, there are a lot of voice activated remote controls now through Samsung and a bunch of other companies. Um, but again, you can set this up with a plug or set this up specifically with a home or a hub, and you can kind of manage basically voice activated to manage your TV. Same thing with like home management as far as temperatures, same thing as far as door openers are concerned. Sometimes that's an issue, but simpler things for door openers. Sometimes we have just people tie either a rope or a strap or something that's not particularly unattractive onto a door handle to pull closed as they walk through, um, especially if you have a weighted door that's kind of hard to stay open. And then phone or tablet access. Again, I'm going to run out of time for some of this stuff, guys, but there is a bunch of technology out there for switch controls and being able to make your iPhone or smartphone accessible for you if you have the limited range of motion there. Bunch of free speech to text software. Again, if your dexterity is a little off, um, typing without a keyboard, there's that Toby Dynavox. There's this glass house, which I've used a few times, which basically check the cervical movement. And that blue piece on there is something you would bite on, and that would be your switch. So basically, your head moves around as the mouse, and then you bite down on that blue uh, tab there, and that is your switch to basically click. Like that's the click of your mouse button, and then the uh, glass piece, the glasses piece is basically your cervical range of motion that is acting as your mouse. Again, something I would be assessed for. It's not something that gets covered, a couple hundred bucks, I believe. Um, but it is something that we have here that is a, a nice thing to, uh, to trial. Again, if this is someone who just has cervical range of motion, but maybe not necessarily upper extremity range of motion. Adaptive mice, there's a thousand of them out there, a bunch of different types. Again, depends on your hand mobility. And then here's a bunch of other links I wanted to send you guys as far as computer use is concerned. There's that Toby Dynavox, the eye gaze. This is if you just had eye movements. Again, I wasn't sure who would be on the call, so I wanted to kind of throw it all out there for you guys. Okay, what do I got left? Kitchen home management. Here's some tips for baking and cooking. Make things a little bit easier for yourselves. Just compensatory strategies as opposed to adaptive equipment. And then as far as adaptive equipment is concerned, you've probably seen cutting boards. Um, there are a bunch of different out there. Homecraft makes a pretty good one, but they have ones that have slicers adapted onto the side or peelers adapted onto the side. A um, bunch of the options to make things a little bit easier, especially if you have difficulty kind of stabilizing the item while you're also cutting it. Um, here are a couple other ones. I'm going to attach it directly to the edge of the counter. This is that Homecraft one I was talking about. It's got the grater. It's got a slicer or peeler. It's got something to kind of act as a vice to keep something stable. A lot of options out there. Other equipment. Uh, this is a can strainer. This is a single hand, you know, pasta strainer or strainer, as you've seen. A lot of these tongs make things a little bit easier as far as grips concerned. This is a, a can opener. They have these Dyson grips that you see, the yellow one down here. And also, this is a pretty inexpensive uh, can opening device that you basically put different types of jars and cans into each of the three different sizes. And then the little white thing on top that the young man is using that ends up acting kind of like as a Dyson. So you have one thing that stabilizes at the bottom, one thing that you can use obviously to just open. Again, that thing is about 25 bucks. It's not horribly expensive. Gave you guys some other kitchen resources here, Kitchen Magic, bunch of modifications for accessibility for your kitchen. This is if you need actual modifications to your particular kitchen. Again, this is not stuff that gets often covered, but if you don't have an accessible kitchen and that is your main barrier, that's an option. Um, and back home safely, there's a bunch of companies that are out there and do um, modifications to your home for accessibility purposes. Disability Superstore is also a really nice resource. They're all kitchen and home related products, some of which I've put in this slide, some of which is just 
on there for you to be able to peruse. Not horribly expensive, but a bunch of different stuff, especially for kitchen home management. The Accessible Chef is a cool link too, I wanted to give you guys. It's, it's seen more leaning towards recipes and skills and resources for, for younger, for kids with disabilities, but it's absolutely applicable for basically anyone. Um, and that gives you like strategies, it gives you recipes, it gives you strategies, it gives you resources, it gives you adaptive equipment recommendations. Um, and they even have some like virtual cooking classes, things like that that are on there. But that's a cool one that I've seen lately. Some tips for laundry and cleaning. Again, seated position is gonna be prim primarily for most of the folks I think on this call, uh, but reachers make things a little bit easier there. Um, the main thing is if you have laundry and dryer, washer dryer, let's say down the stairs into the basement, those kinds of things obviously make, you know, are more about the accessibility, but um, the front open washer dryer makes things a lot easier if that's an option. Wheelchair accessories. I know uh, Natalia wanted us to talk about this a little bit. Again, we have a wheelchair clinic at West Orange, and you guys probably have wheelchair experts and people in your lives, possibly, uh, certainly the vendor. But I will do my best to kind of cover this. And if we want to do a more in depth call about wheelchair accessories and equipment, we do have a couple of wheelchair clinical specialists here that are associated with our wheelchair clinic. Um, they work with all kinds of different vendors here, and they could probably do a presentation for you somewhere down the line if you'd like. So we could talk about that a little bit offline. But um, aside from that, a couple of just basic things. Uh, these these RAM mounts that you saw, the first one there, these, these are just a couple of options. Again, this is going to be based on your wheelchair, based on your wheelchair vendor. Um, they're very sturdy. Put your iPad on it. Put your phone on it. Uh, put your drink. There's a bunch of different mounts you will see on there, they have light duty ones, heavy duty ones. I would just look through that website for some options. But again, if you have Permobile as your vendor or um, national seating and mobility as your vendor, whoever your vendor is, those would be the people that I would talk to. Um, that would be, uh, that would be the first person I would talk to if you have a wheelchair vendor. Wheelchair clinic for us or someone, you know, whoever your wheelchair uh, specialist is, is also a nice option. But again, if you want a referral for the wheelchair clinic here, they will be happy to look at um, whatever your current seating system is, see what you're eligible for, see what accessories might make sense and give you some resources too. I'm gonna give you just kind of like the basics. This monsters, this is stuff that I got specifically from our wheelchair clinic. These monster scooter parts, they like to send people to for um, really cheap options for repairs um, and parts. Spin life is a really cool thing specifically for assistive devices, different types of chairs, walkers, canes, um, some used, uh, some brand new, uh, but they have a, a, a nice um, uh, like, re like return and guarantee policy from my understanding and that you, could, you have options to trial things. And then she told me also about um, this MWG manual. It's an app actually, not a website, but this app is uh, a standalone app as a wheelchair guide for consumers to kind of take an active role in the management of their chair. So it it's, gives you options to how to handle the issues, um, repair options, suggestions, uh, vendors in the area or repair specialists in the area. Uh, gives you a maintenance schedule for your type of chair. It's just kind of like a, a, a relatively not fancy, pretty intuitive app to kind of you put in your specific type of chair and it will help you um, kind of show you the, the um, normal maintenance schedule for it, hook you up with vendors, that kind of stuff. So that's a cool thing that's pretty new. I think it's, I think currently she said it's just for manual wheelchairs, I'm sorry to say, but the power wheelchair um, branch of it is coming out soon. That was what she told me a couple of weeks ago. So keep a lookout for it. If you have a manual chair, it'll be applicable for you right now. For the power wheelchair, I would just keep an eye, maybe just download the app anyway, and just see if you can get, uh, keep an eye out for it. Um, we talked a little bit on the phone, Natalia and I, about these portable power wheelchairs. I give you a link for a couple of options for you here and a portable electric lifts if you are someone who needs an electric or a Hoyer lift. I know you guys are going to have a presentation shortly on travel options, but these are obviously nice options for getting around. I can also send you links to some of the stuff I have on travel as far as just strategies for navigating airports, who you contact, getting in and off, on and off planes, things like that. Um, I didn't put that all in here because it's kind of more text related as opposed to like just links to products, but I will send that to Natalia and she can shoot that up to you guys as well. Um, other resources, very briefly. I know I have my next patient is coming along, so I'm going to try to move through 
the last couple of slides here, guys. Um, disabilities.com is a great resource. Um, lots of events, resources in the area. Disabilities Expo is on there, which I'm going to tell you a little bit about. There's forums, there's adaptive sports. You've probably seen it before, something like it. It's a great resource. A um, couple other basic ones, Christopher Reef Foundation, United Spinal Association. If you haven't already made yourself members of those things or contacted them or got on any kind of um, uh, like distribution list, they are spectacular and they have all kinds of resources. And if there are things that you need that you're not covered, those kinds of things are great avenues to go through with them because they're all kinds of funds and all kinds of applications to kind of get things covered or get things secondhand. So they're they a good organization to look through. Disabilities Expo that I just mentioned, this one's coming right up. So for you folks who are, sorry, sorry, my uh, young lady in Texas, but uh, it's it's New Jersey, it's Edison, um, but anyone else who's in the New York, New Jersey area, this is a really, really cool event. It's a three-day event. You have the hours and times there. I've been to it and they have all kinds of vendors bringing adaptive equipment, durable medical equipment, assistive devices, all kinds of tech, all kinds of disability products. There's workshops, there's interactive events. It's a super cool thing. Uh, I know I said super cool a lot, but it is very cool and you can see all kinds of new late technology stuff that's probably I haven't even seen yet. So if you can make it to those things, it's easy, it's free. You can register for it, go to one of the days and you can go around and see what everyone's got new that's going on equipment wise and talk to the experts who have created it. Um, that is a really cool thing to do. Uh, yeah, and I think that, I think I made it somehow through most of that. That's amazing. Uh, final thoughts, okay. Basically the same thing I kind of said at the top. Um, this isn't everything. This is a lot of things that I have seen, some things you guys have probably seen, some things that I researched and looked at brand new just for this. But again, this is not specific recommendations for you guys. That would be something that would be specific to you and what your mobility is like, plasticity, flaccidity, your tone, uh, how your mobility is overall. Those things would be needed to be assessed, especially for some of the more durable medical equipment pieces. But Otherwise, most of the stuff is stuff that you can privately purchase um, on your own. It's not horribly, horribly expensive. So it's, you know, most of them are, are worth just kind of perusing and kind of trying to figure out what's right for you. But if you want a full and thorough evaluation, you'd be looking towards your OT and PT for those things, if possible, or your doctor, your healthcare provider. Uh, certainly we can do that kind of thing here. I'm not, um, we, we, you know, those folks who are already familiar with West Orange and Kessler, uh, we do this kind of stuff all the time. So feel free to reach out to me or directly to Kessler if it's something that you're interested in. Otherwise, reach out to whoever your typical clinician is. You can even share some of these resources with them, um, see if they have any information on it, um, see if they have any comfort or familiarity with it. Okay, so that stuff's in there. My email, my phone number. I'm sorry to move quickly. Questions, how are you guys thinking? What, 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 very boring, very exciting, uh, stuff you've all heard before. Hit me with it. I think I heard a lot of new information. <laughs> oh, good, good. No, definitely. That's good. I was afraid you'd be hearing all the same stuff. Okay. No, oh, no, a lot of new information that I'm excited to explore more for sure. Cool. Definitely not boring. Um, good. Okay. <laughs> I know I speak very fast, and I was trying to move quickly. Uh, I wanted to just. I figured this is my time to be in front of you guys. I'm gonna try to give you everything I can think of. Thank you so much. It was really great, oh. actually. Yeah. Good, good. Any questions about any of the stuff we talked about that you want to hear more about? Actually, okay. can, I say, can I say something really quick? Please, yeah, of course. Um, the lift wear. I'm actually thinking, yeah. you know, I'm a low, low level, so it's not for me, but my mm -hmm. grandmother um, is 99 and she shakes when she eats a lot. And I've noticed half of her soup ends up on her, on her napkin. Yeah. Would that work for someone who has like, is- um, Tremors? Yeah. Yeah, I have seen it worked. It depends on sort of the severity of the tremors a little bit. There's also, I didn't put them in here just because the tremors aren't a typical thing for this population, but there's also the swivel utensils. I don't know if you've seen those, but they actually just kind of have a hinge. I can, I can send you a link to that too when I send this PowerPoint to Natalia, but um, they basically act on a hinge. And as you move, the bottom stays put, even if the handle stays. So it's kind of similar to that. It won't um, it's a little lower tech. I've seen that used more with folks who are suffering from Parkinson's, something with a, with a pretty consistent um, action tremor. Uh, so it's hard for me to say if it would specifically work for her, but it, I, I have seen people use that and the, and the swivel utensils. So I will send a link. We have a link to LiftWeb, but I'll send you a link to the, the swivel utensils as well. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, I'll oh, put all good. the resources in our email and save it. Yeah, I'll, I'll put this thing in there. I'm going to send you the stuff on the travel. Uh, there's Again, it's like paragraph forms, like strategies, and then there's some hyperlinks in there, but it wasn't quite conducive to, the, to this PowerPoint. So um, I'll send you that resource. And anything else I need to send anyone? Anything else that came up that we thought of? Um, I'm definitely interested in um, having someone that you said um, might be an expert in wheelchair accessories. Yeah. Like I um, asked them about some options for this. And as we were talking, I would, you know, we were discussing it and said like, this might be, I mean, it's like a bigger, it's a bigger conversation just to be all power wheelchair and manual wheelchair specific. And all they do all day long is script people for chairs, fit people for chairs, adjust them. They have the vendors in every day. So I thought like maybe if they want more, if you guys want more of that kind of thing, they could probably do a full hour just on wheelchair stuff, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, so I figured I'd do an introductory thing. I gave you some of the resources that they gave me, but again, I, I can give you the names for um, two Marys and a Cindy, and I will give you their information. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you want to have them do one of these in services with you, that'd be, that'd probably be the most, make the most sense. Sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. It was really nice to meet you guys. I'm sorry I speak fast. <laughs> and okay, you got a lot of information in. Yeah, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll send you guys that stuff really shortly, okay? Yeah, no worries. Don't rush. No okay. Worries. Okay. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you guys. Lauren, all the Jessicas, Naomi, Evelyn. Nice to meet you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'll see you all next week, okay? Take care, everybody. Bye. Have a good trip. Thank you. Oh, yeah, have fun. <laughs>